This is Rackham Jam Man is with Velvet Chains. How you doing, man? Hey, buddy. I'm doing well. How are you? Um, you know, just chilling, you know, just got home from school, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's awesome. I wish that when I used to be in school, I'd get home and do a podcast. That's sick. <laughs> oh, but trust me, you do not want to be in school. <laughs> <laughs> not right now or what? No. <laughs> The math's pretty hard if you think about it. Well, it just that the problem with me is that I know all the answers and I scream them at, well, I don't like scream them, but I answer them all. And then everybody's giving me dirty looks like, what is wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's Dude. Awesome. That's everybody, what, what... Keeps, everybody keeps saying, give the kid a chance. Give them chances at least. <laughs> what grade are you in? Uh, fifth fifth grade cool i remember that time man you're you're onto cool stuff at fifth grade man i was just worried about i don't know playing sports maybe cartoons uh, i don't even remember man. maybe middle school i actually think i'm going to football middle school oh cool yeah very nice so awesome. for those who are watching and not familiar with your band could you tell me all about yourself yeah so velvet chains is a band that i started around 2018 and what I wanted to do is I wanted to start a, an original band and get together a bunch of local cool musicians that we could do this with. And um, I put an ad on Craigslist. So I started getting messages from random people and uh, I started doing auditions. And eventually after uh, two, three months, found the right lineup for the first iteration of Velvet Chains. And we got together and we just started playing mostly covers in the beginning. And we had a blast and we were gigging all over uh, Las Vegas. We played LA a couple of times and then uh, the pandemic hit. So we found ourselves that we were just, you know, sitting on the couch doing nothing, not, nothing positive at least, and just staring at the wall. And uh, we said, hey, why don't we start writing original stuff since we said we were eventually going to do it rather than just do nothing because we couldn't rehearse or gig. And that's how we became officially an original band around 2020, last year, beginning, and put out a record and went down the, the whole road of putting out an album and releases. And, and that's been Velvet Chains in, in a very, very short summary. <laughs> so the name is uh, Velvet Revolver and Alice in the Chains? You know, when we started, we were trying to come up with the name. And since when we started, we were, while we wanted to do originals, we were kind of focused on covers and we're like, look, most of the time, most of the stuff that we're playing is uh, very uh, uh, early 2000s rock and nineties uh, grunge. So it kind of made sense. I chose Velvet and my uh, drummer at the time, she chose uh, Chains and we ended up as Velvet Chains. I mean, it, it drives the message across and it seems to work. Ever think of covering that Gary uh, Mosey song, Velvet Chains? No, you know what? Yeah, yeah. If you Google Velvet Chains, you'll see Velvet Chain or Velvet Chains by, by that guy. And yeah. uh, I didn't know that at the time. I wasn't familiar with him or, or that song. So that was fun. But slowly, uh, every time you Google it, now we're moving up and up and up. So eventually we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pass him. We'll be the first hit. <laughs> He's in some country, dude. I found him looking for you. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely like, I don't know, like 70s, 80s or something. So yeah. I'm like, ah. Yeah. 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 Imagine the 80 year old looking for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hey, you know what? We have a lot of people down. like our music. So <laughs> totally cool if we got a fan base of 80 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. Don't mess with 80 year olds. <laughs> Why is that? You have you had some bad experiences or what? Uh, uh, yes. They will hunt you down. Oh, wow. go through the deep edges of Facebook. Are these are these other 80 year old musicians you've interviewed and now they're hunting you down? Is yes. what went down? They yeah. will find you and they will make you suffer. I will take your I advice. <laughs> I love it. I'll write that down. I, I've been running ever since. I'm gonna be moving next year. I have to. <laughs> I can't stay in one place for too long. They may find you. Yeah, they may find me. Even great. though Buffalo seems like a very small town. Yeah. Oh, you're up in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, dude. Yeah. I, I've, you know, my previous life when I, I did a couple of years up in Plattsburgh state university when I first uh, came to the U S to, to go to school. So I'm familiar with the area. Buffalo is probably like four hours South or so five hours South or something like that. So yeah, it's very cold up there. Though. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe your sound? How would you describe it? 
you know, back to that uh, Velvet Revolver and uh, Stone Temple Pilots. I, and I didn't come up with this. I've asked uh, a few people or just people randomly have told us, man, you guys sound like the, a mix between Velvet Revolver and Stone Temple Pilots. And I'm like, you know what? I, like, I'll take it. That's grunge plus hard rock. So that's us. I say it really reminds me of 90s grunge. I really like it, man. I really yeah, like thanks, it. Man. Yeah, we have a couple songs in that record that like Wasted or past the disease i mean those could be alice and change songs at the end of the day the way they sound so i definitely see what you're saying now you guys are from vegas but are big in south america and mexico how did that happen bro yeah so i'm originally from chile from south america and my uh guitar player lohan he's from brazil so you sound um, a little mexican there what's that picking it up <laughs> oh look at you little me go oh, that's right there you go there you go uh, da, so, da. oh sorry <laughs> no, you're good naturally we uh we we found pr agencies not only in the u.s to work with but also in brazil and in chile and they covered the rest of latin america including mexico and so on so because we have roots down there and rock and roll is such a big thing in south america it kind of worked out and we've picked up a lot of a lot of fans in the region Hey, man, like to see it, like to see the outside Mexican. (laughs) (laughs) What I'm trying to say is because we actually might move to Mexico. We don't know. Oh, cool. No, there's, you know, Mexico's a beautiful place. I've been there maybe four or five times. And uh, oh, no, no, sorry. We actually might be taking vacations. We were planning on doing this uh, this December, but it got canceled. Got it. Where where at? The Cancun or what are you thinking? Cancun, Cancun. Yeah. Sweet place, man. I've been there a few times. Yeah. There's some really like really good people there. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, it's my, my probably my favorite place to vacation. I can. I actually know a little bit. See, amigo. Oh, that's one of the classic ones. Adios. Mas cerveza. Bandeo. 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 I don't know that one. <laughs> I think I might know another one. Poo. <laughs> Por favor, maybe. I mean, those are the basic ones, right? Por favor. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually taking uh, Mexican uh, classes. Oh, cool. Spanish. Spanish, yeah? Yeah, yeah, Spanish. Cool. You get how it is, mom, amigo. That's right. Let's see. <laughs> I've seen this album was getting a lot of buzz, and you guys are getting a lot of YouTube hits off this. So, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. The YouTube thing was mostly because of the music video that we did. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. It's a little intense. Did you check it out? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was so, on- yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, but we worked with uh, Dean Carr on that one. And that was a blast, man. And Dean, the, everything you see on the music video was his uh, imagination. And I think it worked out. And a lot of people have loved it. So we've had a lot of organic views on, on YouTube on that one. Let's talk about your track, Tattooed. First off, I have to say that song rocks, man. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Hmm. How did you hook up with Guns N' Roses, Richard Fortness? How did you hook yeah, up? Yeah, man. So I actually, uh, inter- I actually interviewed Guns N' Roses myself, Bumblefoot. I saw that. You know, I was listening to that interview before I, I logged on. And that's amazing, dude. You know how many people want to interview Bumblefoot? Foot? There's a ton of people that want to interview him, and he's very selective, dude. So I don't I know him personally, a- but great, great interview. I- He's such a nice guy. He's really such a nice guy. And you guys were talking about the vegetable garden you got going on and everything. Yeah. Else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, we hooked up with uh, Richard Fortis, who's a rhythm guitar for uh, for Guns N' Roses, or as his, I believe, believe his Facebook or Instagram says, the other guitar player in Guns N' Roses. <laughs> That's like his description. And uh, that was thanks to Mike Squires, who's a, a close friend. And he's up near you, somewhere uh, near uh, Buffalo living right now he's the he's the guy who does couch riffs podcast and he is the guitar the lead guitar player for duff mckagan's loaded so with him um you know i I asked him i'm like man we're looking for some collabs on on this new record that we're doing and uh, you know do you have any 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 anyone you would suggest and he gave me a few names and when we we heard richard fortis we're like oh yeah dude man that's gnr that's a mothership so let's uh try to hook up with him so he introduced us he uh Sent him our demos. Richard liked it. He liked what we're doing. He, he I guess, suppose he liked that as, us as a band. 
And he's like, yeah, man, I'll collab with you guys. So that was great. And you guys had members from Duff Band, Duff's Band, this album too, right? Yeah, yeah, Mike, Mike Squires, who I was just uh, mentioning, and also Jeff Rouse, who's the bass player for, for Duff McKagan's Loaded. And he, both of them collabed together on, on Past the Decease. So that was a blast, man. Um, was uh, Duff too busy? No, you know what? Duff is a legend, <laughs> right? And he's yeah. a, like any legend, busy guy. We didn't uh, reach out to him. Would have been, you know, great also to consider him as a, a collab. But uh, it wasn't on the cards. It wasn't part of the, the, the referrals that we got. So we also didn't want to, you know, push it too hard. And honestly, Richard is such a virtuoso. Such an amazing musician, man. His technical ability is probably the best in the world, man. Bumblefoot level, if not better, you know? And you. Uh, we were super happy with him, man. We, we didn't want to, like, say, well, what about Slash or what about Duff, man? No, we got an amazing contribution from him. Uh, your song, Path to Disease, is about COVID, right? You know what? That's, that's actually, nobody's mentioned that, but that makes a lot of sense. I like the, the comparison. <laughs> But honestly, it's about when I wrote it, I wrote it. It was mostly about drinking and, you know, what? addiction in general. Yeah. It's a bit like past the deceased is kind of like pass me the bottle, pass me the glass. And I just called it a deceased. But that was, you know what? It probably should have been about COVID. <laughs> you, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude, but dude, <laughs> you sound silly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You no, actually you, sound silly. If you think about it, right, past the disease, I'm begging you, please. Like, you're not begging somebody to give you COVID, right? But you I, could be begging somebody to pass you a beer while you know it's not good for you, right? So I got you, man. But it just passed the disease, bro. It's I get I, I can I can see like, you know, you're being a little, you know, over exaggerating in the drama, past the disease, past the burden or something like that. But dude, I, I love it. I, I know what I know what this thing is. I know what this, but I I kind of saw it coming a little bit. But like I get stuff like that, like pass the disease, pass the burden down to me. Give me a drink, give me a beer, stuff like that. Hey, but to give you credit, I all these songs were written during COVID, and they're quite negative and a little bit dark, and you can see a lot of anxiety through them. And that's I don't know they if were, you should pass that down. Well, yeah, right. But at the end of the day, like that song may not specifically be about COVID, but they were all inspired by it. So to a certain extent, you're right anyway. Okay. Yay. I still get right. I still get the upper hand. Let's get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah gang, gang. Road star. Road yeah. star. <laughs> Love it. So what is the music scene like in Vegas? Yeah, Vegas is kind of cool because we're like a lace backyard and there's a lot of musicians that have moved to Vegas recently. And historically, there's been a lot of music in here. So like the rock and roll scene, we have so many venues here from clubs to bars to dive bars to casinos, uh, big venues that are constantly playing rock and roll. And so you got a lot to choose from any given weekend, even weekdays. You want to see a rock show, you got multiple options. So it's alive and kicking over here. And with so many people from LA coming over, it seems to be like, I don't think it's ever going to become like the number one rock city, but after LA, it could take, you know, a second, third place. It's kind of cool. I mean, you guys can play every uh, night to a new audience who have never heard of you because it's just tours. It's all just tours. Dude, that's a brilliant. That's brilliant. I love that you caught that. And that's mm -hmm. part of living in Vegas, man. It's like a satellite city where people just come and then the next night it's a completely different group of people. I yeah. love that you said that, man. That's really smart. Yeah. It's basically like you get a new thing every day. You get a new bottle every day. That's it. Yeah. Past the disease. <laughs> okay, now we don't got to go today. We don't got to go past <laughs> the bottle. Give me the disease. <laughs> I like I'm gonna have a collab from you on our next record, dude. That was great. I don't want to sound that much emo. I get into it and then I get sad. I don't want to. Oh, <laughs> You're yeah, a fifth grade. You can't be that emo quite yet, man. It's too early for you to be emo, man. Yeah, I I I look, trust me, I make fun of emos every single day. I don't want to become one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's a thing. That's a thing, right? And our, our our thing is to stay in the hard rock lane and maybe grunge lane and in that area. But the whole emo thing, like we don't want to cross over to that. But love know, you, love some bands. Yeah, 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 I'm done with your grunge and thing. But emo does not seem like it. You're too yeah. like light, and you're too like you got too much light to you. I don't seem that dark <laughs> yet. 
I love it. <laughs> so I guess all shows would be a first impression. Tell me again, what? Sorry. So I guess all shows would be a first impression. What would be a first like impression? Like in Vegas. Like in yeah. Vegas. Oh, I see. All all shows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Um it, when when we don't always play uh casino venues. We did. We've been playing the past two, three shows. We played at the barber shop inside the cosmopolitan, and that's a really cool rock venue. Like we played the night after like MGK was there playing rock, and it was kind of fun. Uh, love that place. Probably one of the top, if not the top place for rock right now on the strip. But we've also uh, played a lot of local bars. So we do have a bit of a local following here in Vegas. And uh, most tourists don't venture out off the strip and to the divey or, or local casinos and stuff. So we do both, man. We do both. And it's a good mix because we also need that, that group of people that follow us consistently, you know. Now I see in the Golden Knights gave you some love. How cool is that, man? No, I do. That was awesome. Yeah, they're so kind, man. They're so generous to, to the local community. And uh, it was great to be there and 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 boom, suddenly on the Jumbotron, like artist, Vegas, bread, artist, whatever it is, uh, Velvet Chains and with Tattooed featuring Richard Fortas. And then they came over to us and put us on, on camera, which they don't typically do that for most bands. And uh, that was really cool to see our faces on the Jumbotron. And I started getting a bunch of text messages from people I hadn't seen in a while. And they're like, hey, bro, I'm at the game. I saw you on the Jumbotron. And I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, man. So that was a lot of fun. How did you guys do at the Battle of Bands? We, I think we did great. We didn't officially win the Battle of the Bands. Uh, the band that won, uh, Indy Florentino, fantastic band. They're a little bit more varied than we are. And I, I, I'll suspect that that's probably um, why they ended up winning. But again, their sound is incredible. They're an incredible group of musicians. But um, they play a little bit more top 40-ish, a little bit more pop stuff. And for your general casino crowd, that'll get your older uh, conventioner crowd up and dancing, you know? So I think that we did great. We got, we're in touch with them still at the venue, the barber shop to figure out when we're going to play again because they want us back and uh hopefully that'll become like our spot where we're playing consistently you know at least a couple of times a month and then that's you'll the whole be, idea. you know like you'll become a family member if you can say it like that's what we're trying to do yeah but look winning in winning would have been great for sure um with the the winner got a six month residency or something like that but maybe also one day you guys will win Maybe you know why, but also like committing to a six month residency and where you're playing every week and you're mostly doing covers and you also have to play a lot of stuff that the crowd will request. And it's not really my thing to start playing Kings of Leon and Imagine Dragons. You know, it's I, but much love to both bands, a lot of respect. It's just not my thing. So I think it was a blessing in disguise at the end of the day. And, and as long as we can keep playing there, you know, I, I love it. It was a great experience regardless. Um. I seen the video you posted. The crowd seemed to love it. The crowd seemed to love it. No, they were definitely, yeah, they yeah. they they definitely, you know, the, we played some some crowd pleasers like that was mostly a cover gig, right? And mm -hmm. we played, you know, Sweet Child of Mine or Paradise City. And whenever you play songs like that, everybody gets up and dance. So that's that's good stuff. Yeah. Did you guys should try to do uh Begin? Do you know what that song is? Which one is that? Begin. Begin from who? Uh, big Fairkey Valley. A lot of famous artists have covered it. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta check that out. It yeah, it, it I'm sure actually, I've heard it. Yeah, it's a, it's actually one from the '60s to the '20s to the 2000s. So yeah. Oh wow! I'll definitely get you guys a lot of clout and stuff. Yeah, no, I'll check it out. Thank you for the tip. Yeah, That's great. You're welcome, man. Yeah. Hey, heads up. Give you props. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. You got to give me half the money then, bro. I'll give you half yeah. the money. I'll go send you a check for $7. Yo, 50, <laughs> yo, 50, 50, 50, bro. That's how we work. That's how That's the deal done, works. Done deal. Done deal. Send me Thank your paperwork. You. I'll sign it immediately. Let's go. All right. Let's do this, man. <laughs> yeah. That guy up throwing karate kicks. Maybe uh, like that a little too much. And I love him. Get... Yeah. Oh, our singer? Or who was throwing the karate kicks? Was it our singer? Was it Jimmy? The guy in the crowd. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should have gave him a little pat on the head and say, come on, buddy, come on. Our singer for that gig is actually a martial artist. So that's why I immediately thought, I'm like, this he's like a black belt and like all sorts of MMA stuff. And I'm like, wow, Jimmy was throwing kicks. But no, yeah, I saw that guy throwing that kick. That was hilarious, man. 
Yeah, but I, you know, I love it when the crowd gets involved and you can be yourself and you can do whatever you want and nobody's going to judge you and nobody's going to care. So you can beat somebody up on stage and nobody's going to judge you? Hey, if it's the right crowd, if it's the right concert, man, it's happened before. Just so pick up a random woman, kiss them. Nobody's going to judge you, right? Well, in this day and age, Just that's punch a little somebody bit right in the head. Nobody's going to judge you, bro, right? That's probably more accepted these days yeah, than yeah, grabbing yeah, some yeah, lady. Yeah. And... Exactly. That's why I'm trying to, you don't... I'm I'm just teasing, bro. But I hate to seem that guy. Like when you say something like, "Oh, everybody will just accept it." I hate to seem like the guy. What about that? What about this? What about well, this? Well, you know, with some boundaries, right? If you're throwing karate <laughs> kicks, make sure there's nobody on the receiving end, right? No, so. no, nobody wants to just get a big like kick right to the chin. Just, let me show you. Wow! Look at that! Wow, that was a good move right there. I That's actually a do great a little move. bit of yoga. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, Very a little cool. stretching. That's good, man. That's good. Dude, I'm all about exercising and stuff. Yeah, so. let me go give a little stretch. Let's see that. Let's see that. <laughs> I can actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you're about to fall off that chair. <laughs> I'm about to break this chair. I know. What do you do? Like the downward dog, the baby? Yes, yes, yes chair, I can do it. Okay, baby. Get... I don't know the name. No. I got to get into a zone to show it more. Got it. Got it. My inner Let's yoga. Anything. Let's not break anything, please. <laughs> I don't want my dad to yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are just doing uh, Vegas shows or do you have a tour plan? We're working on a tour for 2022. The whole thing with uh, with COVID kind of puts everything in limbo. Things seem to be opening up 100% now. And we're working to play mostly festivals next year that we can fly in and out of. But we're looking at tours and probably a supporting act tours. And we're looking at local supporting acts also. So we, we're cooking a bunch of stuff right now. But we still have, uh, have a lot of work to do to get it out there. And like internationally, same thing with COVID. We're not sure. But we would love to go to South America, Europe, and get all that done. But again covid pending you know you guys have a pretty hot drummer i figured you want her up front yeah so the the whole concept of the band and uh, <laughs> a lot of people seem to share that opinion man so yeah no she's uh she, she's great the whole concept of the band though is a little bit where we're actually going to make a lineup change and we haven't announced anything quite yet because we're waiting to you know get everything done and align with the pr companies and everything but right now we're making two changes to the lineup so i don't want to go into detail who or what but yeah, as soon as that's uh, final, we'll do a press release and we'll release a new song and, and announce a new lineup. So the whole thing about uh, Velvet Chains is to, you know, have the right people on board. And as we keep progressing, it's kind of my project. So at the end of the day, um, every two, three years, we may make changes and so on. But it's kind of like, the, are you familiar with the Dead Daisies at all? Yeah, yeah. I they're on yeah. my show that I interviewed them. I interviewed oh, Black no Sabbath. I just interviewed Blue Oyster Cult and yeah. Carmen Apiece. Vanilla Fudge, uh, Guns N' Roses, awesome, Black dude. Sabbath, Black Congrats. Sabbath. That's fantastic. Yes, yeah. sorry, bro. Not trying to flex, you know. Dude, flex, flex. I don't know anyone oh. else that's a fifth grader that's interviewed all these people, man. You're a ways ahead of everyone. Oh no, I did this when I was in fourth grade. So. Oh, look at that! Look at you. That's a flex. The fourth that's grade turn into a fifth grader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, no, I, I love that, man. Congrats on all that Thank success. You. And I wasn't Congrats really trying to, I was just trying to name the bands. I know Dude, I went you, a little you too have far big there. achievements. Flexing, you gotta, you gotta know? celebrate. You gotta celebrate those you wins. Got, every, I keep like saying, okay, sorry. Keep going. No, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. I was saying, uh, uh, the Dead Daisies is is led by uh, David Lowy out of Australia, and um, he goes through you know two three years, and he had Richard Fortas in the Daisies, I believe, and now he's got Glenn Hughes, and he's had uh, Dizzy Reed, and a bunch of uh, very 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 well known musicians. For me, it's a little bit different, where we're not quite hiring you know a listers yet, but the whole purpose of this thing is to go into you know the future and see what happens, and if we need to make changes, we'll make the changes necessary, but. That's a very similar concept to the Daisies at, at a smaller level, you know? When I first saw Nils, I thought it was Josh from Chuck Berry. Buck Cherry. Sorry, Buck Cherry. First time I've seen you. You mean like like the way I look or what? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Well, thank you. In yeah. You, oh, Josh, the singer. Yeah. Did you know what? From I got Buck that Cherry. comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've gotten that comparison before because of my hair. It's kind of like his. And the long face. Um, that's a great one, man. I'll take that. I've also gotten comparisons to uh Macklemore, which I'm not sure that's kind of my alley. Don't look like but... him. 
Yeah, it's I don't know what it is, but some people like I was some flight attendant on the flight came up to me and she's like, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Are you Mac Macklemore? Like she was totally serious, but that was funny. Um, I've also had a little bit of a comparison to Duff McKagan here and there, but uh, I could see the Josh Todd thing. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, finally, I got something right from you. I got something right on you. Everybody uh, else was like, no, you this guy. I got. <laughs> <laughs> So what is your favorite memory from playing a show? Oh, man, you know, it's uh, like every show that we play is my favorite show. It's like there's no, I don't know, man, seeing people up and dancing and like every time we play larger venues and the crowd gets bigger and it's like we're just, you know, moving on up. And it's, it's so much fun to see people come out. And, and I, I, I love the, 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 the after playing the show also and, you know, mixing with the crowd a little bit and mingling and. And chatting but yeah if you ask me for like a specific moment of a show man i just enjoy the whole thing so much it'd be like all of them at every every time you know if, yeah i get you what is your worst worst um you know if 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 we if we haven't done the work and or or, or you know a couple of times i i usually like to have two beers before i go on stage and like i know my everybody has a limit if i go over that i'll probably not give the audience my best um, but you know, it takes a little bit of effort to find that, um, what the limit is. So, you know, in the beginning and maybe I had three or four or something before a gig and you know, those moments where I'm not connecting a hundred percent, my fingers with my head and the strings, those were all like, oh man, like what's happening. Those, I don't like those moments. So yeah, gotta be strategic about it, man. Discipline what is next for you? Oh, what? Sorry. No, no, no. I'm just saying gotta be disciplined with that okay. stuff. Um, what's next for us is really planning out the gigs that we're going to be uh, doing. We're also working on this new lineup and uh, seeing what we're doing for 2022. So yeah. And writing new music. So that's exciting. We got a lot of stuff going on. Man. Uh, how do my followers follow you? How do my followers follow you? Yeah, we're on social media. If you uh, check us out on Instagram at Velvet Chains Band. And then on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Velvet Chains. And um, I even think we have a TikTok somewhere, Velvet Chains. So check us out. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we got to keep up with, with you, your friends, man. Yeah. I don't got no friends. You got no friends. You got me as a friend, brother. Yeah. Wait, now I only got one friend in school. Okay, so now you got two friends. Yeah, yeah. Go. But then if you count Bumblefoot and then you count... Bro, you got more friends than I do. Then. They're Carmen a piece, but they're very famous friends. Yeah, high quality. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, I make my uh. So basically, my family is friends with people that are sometimes have half a billion views because I did Shine Down. That's fantastic. Man. Yeah. What are, what's your deal? Are you gonna become a musician? Are you a musician already? What's what? What's uh, I'm your... taking singing lessons. I do have a pretty cool, good voice. Man. Hey, you'll be able to put together a good lineup if you ever want to go that route, you know? I think I might try to do both. I can try to fit journalism and a singer in it. That's awesome. Maybe yeah. one day I'll be interviewing myself in the mirror. There you go. <laughs> on the mirror. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for being on my show, man. I hope the next time talks at the backstage at one of the show dues. Or you could come back on my show. I don't know. A lot of people yeah. have been coming back on my show, so. Yes. Dude, anytime. Thank you for having me, man. Really cool to meet you. I love what you're doing. All the connections you've made and just you running this thing is fantastic, man. So congrats, man. My respect, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. See you, amigo. See you. We'll see you. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> see ya. See ya.